Yes, Lynn? Will you wipe the oil off my back? Lynn, my hands are full of grease. It's too late to worry about that. I've already stained it with suntan oil. I guess your mother will be sore, hmm? Don't worry. I'll get it into the laundry before she sees it. You're a darling, Harold. The way you pamper me. Oh, it's wonderful to be able to sunbathe like this in November. Mmm, that feels good. Uh-oh, I didn't realize it was so late. I've got to get dressed. I'm expecting the boys I sing with and our booking agent to come in from Omaha today. Guess that means you'll be going to work, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Good morning, Mrs. Nart. Good morning. Harold? Yes, Ma? Have you cleaned number three? Well, no, I was just adjusting the carburetor I bought. Well, the room won't take long. No, no, it wouldn't take long at all if your mind were on your work instead of that car and that Novak girl in 17. Actress. <laughs> She's a nightclub singer. Same thing, but worse. Has she got a job yet? Yes, that is, I think so. She's expecting the fellow she sings with in the combo and her business manager to come to town this afternoon. She says when they're really wailing, they sail. Well, you just sail over to number three and give it a good cleaning. And be sure and move the furniture. Okay, Mom. Hey, this is a beauty. They tell me you can get up to 60 in six seconds. Got a Miss Novak here, Lynn Novak. You must be her friends from Omaha. Yeah, she's expecting you. So they call this witcher out right of here. Yeah, maybe you can get rid of your cold now. Will you stop doing that and blow your nose? Miss Novak made reservations for three gentlemen, Mr. Wilson, Cutner, and Davis. I'm Cutner. This is Davis. Mr. Wilson's been delayed. Look, our luggage is in the back seat. Want to take it up to our rooms and park the car? Sure thing. Yes, sir. The keys are the ignition. Park it. Your rooms are 15 and 16. Miss Novak's is 17. Yeah, I guess I better tell her we're here. Just a minute. Come in. Hi, doll. Where's Woody? I guess you didn't hear about it out here. Made headlines in Omaha. The law picked him up. How? All I know is what I read in the papers. They hinted that somebody fingered him. After I got everything all set here. That's good to know, doll. Because the job goes just as planned. Without Woody? Why not? Think Woody's the only one who can pull a big one? Of course not, but... There's no buts. I've taken over Woody's job. And, uh, Woody's girl? Doesn't she go with the job? You never wanted to be his girl. You were always looking at me. Will you? Got any beer around here? Yeah, there's a couple of bottles in the refrigerator. Let him get it. Al, about Woody. Forget him. I told you he'd finally stub his toe. You, uh didn't have anything to do with his being picked up, did you? <clears throat> <laughs> of 
course not. Where'd you get an idea like that? How about this Carl Johnson guy? This pigeon Woody dug up. How soon can you get in touch with him? Almost any time, if it's urgent. How? I got him to give me a schedule of his daily pickups. You're due to stop at a big supermarket in about half an hour. Get down there and tell him we got in. Sure, honey. Who's the car happy kid downstairs? That's Harold, the manager's son. He runs errands for me. Say his taxis when I have to go into town. He's harmless. Maybe. But his ears look a little big. Come on, Phil. Lynn's got to get dressed and get the word to a pigeon. Hey, I know that band. You should. You were part of it a couple of years back. Yeah, the guys and dolls combo. But they're in Omaha. That's why we bought it. It's a short wave. We want to know what's going on in Omaha when they put out the news. Come on. I put your luggage in your rooms, and I'll take care of your car now. Thanks. delay won't affect that job you're expecting. No, it's all set. You going someplace? Just under the supermarket. Can I drive you? You'll spoil me. Spoil you? That's impossible. I wasn't sure I'd get to show for you anymore now that your friends are here. Al and Phil aren't friends in that sense. It's business. I'm just a voice to them. Then I can still drive you whenever you want to go someplace? Sure. Hop in. Just be a minute. Don't you want me to carry anything? I'm only getting soap. Since you gave me this anklet, I've never taken it off. And you know what that means. All right, Carl. Here's the map of the getaway. You want to go over it again? No, the, the getaway plan's all right. It's the keys that worry me. You've got to get those keys. I can't open the doors or even start the truck without them. That's my department. You just see you're the driver that morning. I'll get the keys. I'll find a reason to be the driver. Good. Now, how much dough do you think the truck will be carrying? Well, the, the supermarket's our last stop. We, we should have picked up around $100,000 by then. Half. Fifty grand will be your share without a bit of risk. Not bad, huh, Carl? Oh, honey, $50,000. What we won't be able to do together. Well, if you don't mind, Phil and I will say good night. Well, we don't mind, do we? Come on, Phil. So long, you two. Oh, honey, $50,000. <laughs> you know, 
I'd be worried if I thought there was a chance of any suspicion falling on you. But there isn't. And so the company you'll never suspect will spend only a little of the money at a time. And that way it'll last forever and ever. I, uh, I think you'd better go home now. It'd ruin everything if anyone saw you here. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Oh, honey, the fun we're going to have, the things we're going to do. I just can't wait. Good night. Good night. We have plenty of time for that later. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Come on in, honey. Hi, Lynn. Harold. Did you want something? Yeah, there's a story in here about a fellow escaping from jail back in Omaha. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know whether you'd heard about it or not. His name is Woody Wilson. Escaped? Woody in jail? Why, why, that's impossible. Says he's a booking agent. It's just a small story, but the name made me notice it. Woody Wilson, local booking agent, arrested last week and being held as a suspect in a series of Midwest armed robberies. Made a daring and successful break from custody today. Why, that's an awful shock, Harold. I uh, don't know how to tell Al and Phil. It's funny they didn't know about it. The arrest took place a week ago. It must have been in the Omaha papers before they left. If they knew, they would have told me. Maybe they had a reason not to. What do you mean? Well, this may sound silly to you, but I've been thinking. That's Wilson's car Al's driving. If that's a hot car, Al can get into a lot of trouble. And you too, Lynn. That car isn't hot. Al bought it from Woody. It's still registered in Wilson's name. I saw the pink slip. Al just hasn't had it transferred yet. Oh. I uh, appreciate your concern, but you're just a little worked up over everything. <laughs> it's Al. Don't tell him anything. Wow. What are you doing here, punk? What? He, uh, just brought me the evening paper. That was real nice of you, Junior. Now, get out. What's with him? Get off him, Mal. He's just a friend. Why don't you shut up? I said get out. I think you'd better leave now, Harold. Know that. Phil and I caught it on the short wave this afternoon. Why didn't you tell me? What are we gonna do? What do you mean, what are we gonna do? We're going ahead as planned. Oh, we can't go ahead. Woody's too smart to try and cross the... What did you say? I said we can't go ahead. That isn't what you said. You said Woody's too smart. <laughs> You're still gone on that guy, aren't you? You'd slip back to him in a second if he showed up, wouldn't you? Just get this straight, doll. Don't ever think you can play me like you did Woody. I wouldn't try. The punk brought you this paper. You sure there isn't something else I should know? The kid knows it's Woody's car. I, uh, I told him you had the pink slip. I don't know if he believed me. You would check us into a motel with a hot rod square. The kid's car. That's a hopped up conversion job, isn't it? Yeah, he's put hundreds into it. Find out how much power is under that hood. Get him to take you for a ride past the hideout cabin. 
Just glance around, see if anybody's been snooping. But the main thing is to get the kid to really open it up. Give it a real speed test in every kind of road. Yeah, he, he's been dying to show me how fast it'll go. That's nice. Phil, if we can do over 90, we might want to use it. Cause her tight. <laughs> from town? Mm -hmm. 26 minutes, but we're not to Rock Creek Bridge yet. Were we really going 100 on the straightaway? Mm-hmm. I had a little more power left. Oh, Harold, look. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a little cabin like that? A place we could go to away from everybody? Yeah, it would. If things were like they were. What on earth are you talking about? Your friend, Cutner. I told you how it is with him and me. Only business. I guess I'm just jealous. You needn't be, Harold. He means nothing to me. You're still worried about me, aren't you? Uh-huh. That newspaper story said Woody was arrested because of an anonymous phone call. Suppose Al was the party that tipped off the police. He wouldn't do a thing like that. None of us ever guessed that Woody was a crook. It's hard to believe even now. Well, what if Woody thought Al did? Now that he's escaped, he'd be looking for him, wouldn't he? See what I mean? Maybe he is. And if he is, you'd be right in the middle of it. The whole thing's ridiculous. What an imagination you have. What makes you so sure the punk won't do anything without telling you first? I just know, Al. Well, one thing's certain. We've got to make sure he isn't around afterwards. You may have him dizzy now, but he'll be able to put two and two together then. How about tomorrow? It's all set. We're going on a picnic. I'll be waiting at the spot you marked in the map. Good. It's a messenger. Answer it. Good evening, ma'am. Western Union. I've got a telegram for the party that lives next door, but they don't seem to answer. And, and the young man downstairs in the manager's office said that maybe I'd be able to find a Mr. Al Kuttner here. That's me. Oh, good evening, sir. Uh, would you like me to wait for an answer, sir? No, thanks. No answer. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Good night. Woody. What does he say? Take good care of my car. I'll be seeing you soon, Woody. You tell that skirt of yours or anybody where we are. Oh, you think I'm nuts? Didn't. I swear it. This isn't from Omaha. Woody's here in this town. Keep the stuff you're gonna wear tomorrow. Pack everything else. We'll take it with us. Now, if Woody shows, play dumb. You don't know anything, you haven't seen us. You, get to our rooms and pack. You're running out. No, doll. It'll look that way to Woody. Come on, pack, pack!
like clockwork. But if he gets chicken, he doesn't follow us. He's got to now. With the keys, he's in this up to his neck. I've never seen you quite so happy, Harold. Why shouldn't I be happy? With Cutner and his friend gone? That isn't a nice thing to say. He got word that his mother was ill. <laughs> that telegram wasn't from his mother. It was from Woody. How do you know it was from? Did you open that telegram before you sent it upstairs? No, I didn't open it. I sent it. You sent that telegram? Why? Al Cutner was lying to you. If he hadn't robbed Woody's car or turned him in, he'd have nothing to be afraid of. But when he ran off in the middle of the night like that, he proved I was right. You don't know what you've done. Sure I do. Made the smart guy jump. He called me punk in front of you, Lynn. I just made him jump through the hoop and show what a punk he really is. And you saw it. That's what I really wanted, was for you to see it. You did it because of me. I couldn't let you get into any trouble, Lynn. Cutner could get you into a lot of trouble. He sure did run when I yelled Woody. I bet he's running yet. I'll never give you away. I swear I'll never tell Al what to do. Right, Junior, the picnic's over. Don't worry, doll. The armored truck and your share of the money's on its way. What is this? Shut up. Do as he says or he'll kill you. Help Phil move all our stuff into the hot rod. OK, going! Keep an eye on Junior. Open up. That's the guy that was in your apartment the other night. Come on, come on, come on. Pretty soft way to get rich, huh, Carl? Yeah. Hurry and tie me up. Easy does it. Everything's going just like I said it would. Just give me a gun. Turn around, Carl. I'll tie up your wrists. I hope you haven't made any plans about how you're going to spend your share of the money, Carl. Quit your worrying, doll. We're pinning it all on Woody with his own car. By the time the cops unravel this one, we'll be miles away. Woody will be on the hot seat. Remember that cabin you were admiring yesterday with Lynn? Yes. That's where we're heading. We'll hold up there during the rabbit hunt. Come on, Junior, you're driving. Used me for a patsy all the way, didn't you? It's too bad, Junior, but we all have to grow up. Come on, let's move it. You're doing just fine, punk. How are the cops doing, Phil? <laughs> They're running around like rabbits trying to trace the truck. Wait till they find it. Then the fun will begin for our friend Woody. Hey. The cops hey. won't even get a smell of us. Here it comes. Still no further word from the police regarding the daring daylight armored truck robbery. Getting away from crime, here's a romantic note in the news. A motel operator, Mrs. Mildred Norton, Mom. fears that her 18-year-old son, Harold, has eloped with one of her tenants. The boy told his mother he was going on a picnic. Later, Mrs. Norton found that the tenant, whom she describes as a swimming pool Delilah, had checked out bag and baggage without paying her bill. 
I'd say they must have planned quite an extended picnic. <laughs> the truck. A Woody's car, too. Give me him. Give me him. They're putting out a full description of Woody. We can listen to the rest of this inside. In fact, for the next few days, we'll do nothing but listen while they block every road. When they pick up our fine friend Woody, we'll just move out, amble out over those mountains. You pick up the luggage, I'll take the punk. Come on. One wrong creep out of you, Junior, you get it. Try to talk him out of the ticket. If you can't, just take it. Must have gone through a speed trap. He followed the dust. Glenn, you stay with him. Listen to what he says. Is your car? Yes. And you must be Harold Norton. Y yes. I'm sorry, Harold, but your mother's issued a pickup order for you. Maybe you didn't know it, young lady, but it's against the law to elope with minors. We aren't eloping. We just went on a picnic. Our friends asked us to drive them up to their cabin. Well, then, let's just say the picnic's over. I'll have to take you back. Yeah, sure, that's, that's OK. Do you uh, want to unload your things? No, I think we'd better go along. I'll talk to your mother, Harold. I'll explain everything. There's a phone up at the junction gas station if it hasn't been commandeered. They've got a roadblock there for the armored car bandits. Yeah, we've been hearing about it on the radio. Think you'll get them? With every highway in the state blocked and all cars being searched, they haven't got a chance. OK, Harold, let's get going. Follow me. Harold, you look a little shaky. Better let Phil drive. Is that OK, officer? I think it's a good idea. Get in, Tom. to one of those roadblocks the cop was telling us about. OK, OK, we'll cut back over the mountains. Take the next dirt road. There it is. Make the turn off. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm listening to a news broadcast about an armored car robbery. OK. It's a dead end. Get out. Hey, there's somebody up there. It's a girl. Hey, how'd you get up here? 
This road's closed till spring. Didn't you see the signs down below? Yeah, but there's not enough snow on these roads to worry about. Yeah, well, there's a lot more on the way. We just got a weather report. You'll be lucky to make it back down to the valley. Say, I know you. You're Harold Norton. That's right. I saw you win the helmet dash at the hot rod races at Colton last spring. Looks like the little lady knows you, Harold. I, uh, I was lucky. Clock said 110. You were hot that day. Better cut out this hot rod, Vander. You folks have got to get out of here before we get socked in. There's a front on the way. Next time you see a closed road sign and the mountains pay attention to it, they don't put them up for fun. Well, if there's a storm coming, how are you getting out of here? I'm not till spring, which accounts for my wide stare, Mr. Norton. Yours is probably the last strange male face I'll see for five months. You live here? Only the winter months. My brother counts snowflakes for the power company. Luther, this is Harold Norton. We saw him win the race at Colton last spring, remember? Harold Norton. Hey, you've got good taste. Your mother's looking for you. It was on the radio. You got a radio up here? The best two-way shortwave transmitter. Look, if you want, I can get our operator at the main office and have her tell your mother you're safe. No, no, no. That won't be necessary, Luther. Let's go over it again. Your job up here is to measure the snowfall for the power company, right? How soon do they send someone up to relieve you? They don't send anybody until spring. You sure of that? Yes. After the first snow, the, the rose block, nobody can get through. What about your supplies? You see what we have here? Enough for a year. Let her go. Put it where it belongs, punk. You plan to stay till spring. Well, I won't. Well, if you want to leave, here's the keys to the car. You're trying to be funny? I don't like surly dames. I'm sorry, honey. This place gives me the willies. Please. You better like it. It's going to save your life, all our lives. Woody, it is best never figured out one like this. For five months, we're on the moon, as far as the cops are concerned. You should be in jail where you belong. Yeah. No, no! Phil, stop him! Are you kidding? So I ought to be in jail, huh? Yes. Terry. Have you ever run through snow barefoot? You know, it figures the company wouldn't install a shortwave transmitter unless you were going to use it regularly. Which will it be? Does your sister run through the snow? Or are you going to tell me when you're supposed to report into the main office? Don't tell him, Luther. Come on, sis. Let's find out how cold it is. Report on Tuesdays and Fridays. What time? Eight o'clock. It's 
Ten minutes after eight. If you'll let me get to the radio, I'm sure I can bring him in. You said you were on the channel. Calling KMT 2VD. That's her. All right. You answer it. Get out of that chair. Calling KMT 2VD. Come in, Luther. This is KMT 2VD. Hello, Elnor. Hello, Luther. How'd you like my namesake? I... I don't think I understand. The storm. The weather boys named her after me because I phoned them so often. They said she'd shake her skirts out right on top of you. You did that all right. How much snow did you get in the upper valley? I, I, I don't know. It's so deep I haven't been able to dig my way out. I can believe that. Ball top reported four feet six. Of course, it'll pack down. What's the temperature up there? I haven't taken a reading today, Elnor. You didn't? What's the matter, Luther? Are you sick? Your voice sounds a little strange. No, 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 I'm, I'm all right. That's good. Now, let me say hello to Terry before I sign off. She's outside. At this hour? I mean, she's taking a bath. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Well, give her my best. Talk to you Friday night, same time. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Eleanor. You did real well, Junior. All right, clear these things up. Luther? Yes? This one of those Geiger counters? Yes. Find anything with it? Nothing worthwhile. There's a low-grade deposit near the lake. That's a sample in a small sack over there. <laughs> hey! What do you know about this thing? It's for kids and suckers. All the chain stores are selling them. Luther! You say this stuff's no good? Well, it runs about a pound to a ton. The government requires at least double that. Honey, watch your cigarette. I haven't got a cigarette. It's the chimney. I'd put a piece of galvanized tin on top of it last week to draw better. Okay, okay. Uh. Tried to burn up the set. So when he didn't answer their calls, the company would send somebody to investigate. I never believed you were one of them. You better get back in the house. If Cutner finds you talking to me, it's not going to be funny.
she got you into this, didn't she? I could wear tight sweaters and sheer blouses and high heels the way she does. Look, Terry, if Kuttner comes in here... Harold, I want to thank you for what you did the other night. It's too bad it didn't work. But you risked your life for me. I'll never forget it. Terry, please go. You'll get us both in trouble. No, we're not in real trouble already. Oh, Harold, have you thought what Cotton will do with us when spring comes? Now, Terry, don't say things like that. Do you think Luther can get the radio working by Friday? No, he can't. The, the transmitter crystal's cracked. Oh, he doesn't think that set'll ever work again. What happens if the thing isn't fixed by tomorrow night? You know what happened to Johnson. How's it all gonna end? In a bloodbath. That's all Al knows about shooting it, kill it. Now he's killing the squirrels. Yesterday he shot ten of them. You'd like to pull out, wouldn't you, Phil? I didn't say that. No, you didn't. But if you did, I wouldn't tell Al. Don't get thinking things, Lynn. We'd never get away with it. There was only one guy who was ever able to outfox Cutter. And that was Woody. But Al got him in the end. Woody isn't the only one who made Al jump. What's behind that remark? Nothing. It's just that I, I know he isn't as smart as he thinks he is. I sure hope Kuttner bought a new battery for this radio before he brought it up here. Now, look, I rewired it so you can use the headset for a microphone. Has Luther connected the wires to the receiver? He's doing it now, right under Cutner's nose. Good. All right, Terry, now look. What Luther and I have rigged up here is like an office intercom to the receiver in the cabin. Luther will be able to hear you, but you won't be able to hear him. So I'll stand in the window of the cabin. When Luther is speaking, I'll have my cigarette in my hand. Every time he finishes, I'll put the cigarette in my mouth. That's my signal to answer? Right. Now look. There can't be any slip-ups. It's got to go just like we rehearsed it. And if you can't get out here tonight, we're sunk. Don't worry. We'll think of something. I know my words by heart. And don't forget, you're not Eleanor. Cutner knows her voice. <sighs> Hello, Luther. This is Florence. Eleanor's off for a few days. Eleanor's off for a few days? That's good enough. Here's hoping. Two minutes to eight. Oh, Harold! What you done? I'm sorry. Oh. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> to change my wet blouse. It's cold. All right. Static. I guess I didn't shield the wires good enough. There isn't time to fix that now. You better bring in that station. Calling KMT 2VD. Calling KMT 2VD. Come in, Luther. This is KMT 2VD. Come in, Eleanor. 
Hello, Luther. This is Florence. Eleanor is off for a few days. Oh, there's a lot of static up here. Are you getting me? You're coming in fine, Luther. Here's the snow report. 84 inches in the basin. Water content, 19.6. 71 inches at Poison Meadow. Water, 17. Thanks, Luther. Talk to you Tuesday. You know, it's a funny thing about that voice. Sounds like your sister. It's warm. Hey, Al, it snowed. Might be a good time to establish that bank you were talking about. Yeah, one where any visitor would leave his calling card, like footprints in the snow. Get my money pouched out. A third of that dough's mine. Before you move it, I would account. OK. I want you squares to see how well crime pays. Get in the other room. Hey, where'd that come from? I got out of Luther's dresser. He's missed it by now. Well, you want to count it? No, I'll just watch you. All right. 9,010. Now for the heavy stuff. Well, this Mazuma makes your mouth water, huh, Don? Mm-hmm. Now what are you doing? Just checking to see if it's still snowing. Well, come here. Well, we got... 40 and 20s, 20 and 50s, two packages of hundreds. Grand total, 82 grand. Satisfied? Yeah, it's all there. All right, depositors. You want a receipt? No, honey, we trust you. It's better to have it someplace where the kids won't get ideas. Mm. You ought to be inside. Catch your death of cold, you won't be able to spend your share of the money. Oh, I'm just insuring my share, Al, by watching the kids. What are you supposed to be, a mining engineer? There are a lot of articles in those old magazines about uranium. You'd be surprised the number of guys who made a success with one of these things. Remind me to file a claim when we move out of here. Get my rifle, doll. I got the shelves in my pocket. I think I'll swing over to the bank and see how our money's holding out. I suppose you're wondering where the bank is, huh, Phil? Why don't mind you hold it a dough, Al? As long as we can't move off this mountain. Meaning just what? That before we move out, we'll have another count. And I'll take my share. Don't you trust me? Oh, sure, Al. About the same way you trust me. Don't point that at anyone unless you're going to use it. I shot the head off the squirrel at 100 yards with this the other day. Oh, don't worry, Al. I'm not nosy like the squirrels. It's good. I'd hate to mistake your head for a squirrel's. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Natural board comedian.
Well, things don't seem to be any worse. I guess they're not suspicious. Luther says that when the company doesn't hear from us, they'll send someone up to investigate. Then we'll be free. And I'll be in jail. Well, you're not one of them. You had nothing to do with the robbery and the murder. Who's going to believe me? Well, Luther and I can prove you didn't. How? What you did last night. If you were guilty, you wouldn't be helping us. What a fella couldn't do if he had a girl like you. You got a girl like me. Come here. I want to talk to you. I won't have you fooling around with that little square. Do you hear me? I won't have it. You don't own me. No? What do you think would happen if I told Kuttner about that telegram? Terry, I think you better leave us alone for a minute. Then you wouldn't tell Kuttner. No, I wouldn't, Harold. But Terry isn't your kind. You turn to her because of Al and me. I told you I want to get away from him. I, I want to be with you. Drive your car and do the things we used to do. In spite of everything, you'd do anything for me, wouldn't you, Harold? I guess I'm trapped. I want you to find out where Al hid that money. I don't want the money, Harold. There's blood on it. I wouldn't touch it. But we've got to get it to save ourselves. It's the only way we can stay out of prison. But I didn't do anything. You drove the getaway car. The police would never believe that you weren't in it from the beginning. But if we have the money, we can make a deal. How am I going to find it? Al, with that gun of his, is watching us all the time. You're smart, Harold. Smarter than Woody ever was. You made Al jump, remember? I'll try to figure out something. I knew you would, Harold. Yeah. Let's knock it off. Go on, get outside. I want to talk to these two. Come on, what are you waiting for? Get over to the window and watch them. What's worrying you, doll? Those kids. What happens to them when we move out in the spring? What do the farmers do in the springtime? Plant them. Phil, where are they now? They're in the shed. I figure they might be. Come on down here and listen. How far away can you hear this snow sled? A mile at least. Depends upon the wind. But Cotton will see it before that, when it comes over the pass. But we'll see it first because we'll be looking for it tomorrow. And he won't. We'll have to make a run for it. You ever see a snow sled? You're gonna see one soon. The power company's sending one up here. I don't get this. Luther has been fooling us with that snow report to his company. When did you get out of it? The other night, when I recognized Terry's voice. I got to thinking about it. I just found out. That room was cold and the window had been opened. They must have rigged a intercom system from out there into this thing with our portable radio. It all adds up. When one of these snow stations don't report in, the company sends somebody up to investigate. They must use one of those gadgets like a tractor. It's the only way to get up over the pass at the deep snow. When the driver gets here, we jump, but go down through the... Oh, uh, we don't go down, we go up. 
There's a pack trail over the divide. The forest rangers use it in the summertime. As soon as we get over, we'll ditch the sled and then take a bus to the nearest town. Where have you been? Looking for uranium? You must be in your second childhood drooling over rocks. Well, you'd be surprised. There's more money in one of these gadgets than you think. You ever see such busy little bees? All right, stop it. But we need some firewood. I said stop it! This wood is so green, I don't think it'll burn. What do you suggest? There's some dead trees just over the hill. It'll make great firewood. If you let Harold help us, I think we could manage to saw them up and drag them in. I'd be glad to help. Isn't that a coincidence? Phil, keep an eye on these three electronic geniuses. While I try and figure out why they want to go over the hill for firewood this fine, bright morning. Some sort of vehicle coming over the pass. Any of you young people try to order me a snow taxi? Phil, get down the road as far as you can without being spotted. If that sled jockey smells something and tries to turn back, give it to him. All right, you. Inside. Come on, come on. Stop right there. All right, sit on that bench. Put your hands on the table. Lynn, come here. You keep him sitting there till I come back with the money. Don't be a fool. Get your hands back up on that table. You act as if you wanted the getaway. I was just trying to keep you from getting yourself killed. What's going on? Turn around! Luther was getting cute ideas, so Harold told him what was good for him. Here, hold this. Better get a thermos of coffee. It's going to be cold where we're going. A couple of minutes now. Harold, get that park over there. Then go put your coat on. Harold, get the thermos bottle. It's in the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. What about Phil? We're leaving him behind, didn't you guess? Drop it! Shoot him, Harold! I said drop it! Smart, isn't he, Hal? He's a Woody who made you jump. He sent that telegram. It was a fake. Terry, it's not like you think. Making me 
jump, huh? Tell me, run, warn Mike and tie it! He's had enough. Are there any more, Terry? Just a girl. And I can take care of her. They're coming back. Where have you got it hid? What are you talking about? The money. Where have you got it hid? I haven't got the money. You had it. Don't give me that! Get away from me. all the time. Well, you'll burn before she'll ever get a set of it. Harold, I represent the insurance company. Yes, I know. Now, if you'll just tell me where you hid the money, my company will pay for your entire defense and double the reward. But I didn't hide it. I don't know where it is. Harold, Miss Novak has already told us how you and she planned together to get the money from Cutner so that you could return it. Now, that was a fine and heroic thing for you both to do. And I beg of you, Harold, remember your promise to Miss Novak, your love for her. But I don't love her. I don't think I ever did. Let me talk to him. Phil's turned state evidence. That means that the only way we can save each other is by standing together. Be smart, honey. Think what we can do with that reward money. I can't help you. I'll get it out of him. You just leave him alone with me. Sorry. Time's up. Wait, Harold. What are you going to do? Withdraw your bail bond, Miss Novak. You can't do that. You promised to fight to keep me clear. Contingent upon your being able to recover the money, Miss Novak. I'm convinced that you can't. You'll regret this, Harold. Just a minute, Miss Novak. We're keeping you under custody. Miss Monaghan, you take Miss Novak up to the warden's office, please. You think you're clear? Well, you've got another guest coming. A lot of people think you're using the public defender's office just to gain sympathy. Nobody else will take the case. They all think I'm lying. Harold, I believe you when you say you didn't get the money. However, we must face facts. Miss Novak's going to testify that you've got it. I know. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and it's got to be Phil. That's why he turned state's evidence so we can get a short rap and be able to go back and get it. Nobody will believe a story like that. No, you'll have to look facts in the face. 
At the trial, it will be Lynn Novak's and Phil Davis's testimony against Luther and Terry's. But Harold's innocent. Yes, I'm sure he is, completely. But you don't think the jury will be? Well, a lot will depend on what sort of jury we draw. Whether some guy believes Miss Novak because her stocking seams are straight, or you, Terry, because your scrubbed face reminds him of his daughter or kid sister. Harold. Harold, I want you to know that no matter what happens, I love you. Oh, Terry, I love you so. Can you keep that light in your eyes at the trial? If you can, I can guarantee an acquittal. We interrupt this program for a late news bulletin. Following the announcement that Harold Norton, recently acquitted in the armored car robbery, has found and returned the stolen money, the Superior Court denied the pleas of Lynn Novak and Phil Davis for clemency. The convicted pair now face 12 years in the state penitentiary. I guess when Harold collects that reward money, you two will set up housekeeping. You heard what the man said? <laughs> 